Welcome back, everyone, and here is Azinis for today's episode with me, Vanessa. President of Timor Leste and Lin Jokhoi discussed the process Timor Leste accession to ASEAN. During the meeting in Jakarta between the ASEAN Secretariat with the President of Timor Leste, Jose Ramos Horta, spoke about Timor Leste's accession process to ASEAN, particularly about three pillars such as ASEAN political security community, the ASEAN economic community, and the ASEAN social cultural community. The ASEAN Secretariat hopes that the report from the fact-finding mission will have a positive impact and continue the roadmap to accelerate Timor Leste become part of ASEAN member countries. When the mission is completed, the report will be prepared and to be evaluated by the ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community for consideration from Socio-Cultural Community and then submitted to the ASEAN Coordinating Council. Meanwhile, Head of State Ramos Orta also presents the development process that has taken place in Timor Leste now and the cooperation that Timor Leste establishes with advanced countries, namely the USA, Japan, South Korea, China, and also a development partner such as the UN. Jose Ramos Horta also talks about the economic integration of Timor Leste, the investment potential in Timor Leste, included the process of joining Timor Leste to the World Trade Organization. Ramos Horta is also accompanied by some of Timor Leste's Member of Parliament, the Timorese Foreign Affairs and Cooperation Minister, Adel Giza Magno, during a visit to the ASEAN Secretariat Building in Jakarta, in order to update Timor Leste's preparation for accession to ASEAN. Indonesian court rejects state narcotics law, which paved the way legalization of marijuana as medicine. Indonesia's constitutional court rejects a judicial review of the country's narcotics law that will have paved the way for legalization marijuana for medicinal use. Three mothers of children with cerebral palsy, backed by civil society organizations, filed a judicial review of the country's strict narcotics law in 2020, arguing for the use of medicinal marijuana to treat symptoms. The judges says there was insufficient research to justify a ruling in favor of the plaintiffs, but urged the government to immediately conduct research on the therapeutic usage of narcotics. Amar Putusan, the court adjudicates that 1. Appeals from plaintiffs 5 and 6 are not accepted. Second, we refuse all appeals by plaintiffs entirely. This decision was made by the Council of Judges. Activists and advocates of parents whose children are in need of medical marijuana expresses their disappointment, claiming that the court has buried hopes of parents who need this treatment for their children. I am disappointed, as are the mothers we are advocating for, but as a citizen of Indonesia, I am angry. It's as if we are unruly when its medicinal marijuana is clearly intended for medical purposes and nothing else. That's the first. Second, the court said this cannot be done yet as we don't have adequate infrastructure. It's as if citizens will be the ones who have to bear the burden of the incompetence of this infrastructure. These matters have to be responsible for the consequences of inadequate policy makers and how to run these policies. Indonesia's parliament has recently discussed amending the rules governing medicinal marijuana. It will undertake a comprehensive study on its benefits. Restaurants in Malaysia raise prices sharply in the midst of Russia and Ukraine crisis. Restaurants in Malaysia are grappling with sharp rises in essential commodities, including flour and cooking oil, over the past months, as the Russia-Ukraine conflict has driven up prices of wheat imports, among other goods. Malaysia has two main staples, namely roti chanai, a fried Indian bread, and mie goreng, fried noodles, with both relying on imported wheat. Because of the rising cost of the wheat, some restaurants have no choice but increase the prices of products. From January until uh, July, the, the cost has uh, increased uh, nearly to 44% uh, in the flour. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we have only increased uh, 10% uh, price of our roti chanai starting of uh, July. We don't want to pass the cost uh, directly to the customer. We want to absorb most of it. Currently, Malaysia's biggest source of wheat is Australia, and about one-fifth of its wheat supply comes from Ukraine. On a recent trip to Turkey, Malaysia's Prime Minister says his country was keen to buy more wheat and wheat products from Turkey as it seeks to diversify its suppliers. Malaysia imports like 60% of our food supply as we you know, heard so much of during the pandemic. So I think if we think about this as a more global um, food crisis setting, that's something that will spark policymakers to really think about long-term planning uh, long-term diversification. 
Thailand opposition accuses Prime Minister of corruption in economic mismanagement in Parliament. Thailand Prime Minister Payu Chan Ocha fended off accusations of corruption and economic mismanagement in a televised session of Parliament. As a censure debate got underway seeking to dent his credibility with an election due within 11 months. Prayut 68, a retired army chief who first came to power in a coup eight years ago, has prevailed in three no-confidence motions since the 2019 election, so him stay on as prime minister in what is now a crowded 17-party coalition. Prayut also faces challenges from 16 renegade lawmakers this year, were expelled from his Palang Pracharat party and have vowed to vote with the opposition. Ten cabinet ministers are also subject of the censure, which runs with a no-confidence vote scheduled. I'm not blaming the dictatorship, but General Prayut's dictatorial-like management of the country. Prayut dismissed the allegations, arguing the government had solved many issues, including reviving tourism and providing financial measures to address pandemic hardship. The main opposition Pew Thailand, the most recent incarnation of the populist party that won five elections since 2001, also launched a parallel censure campaign allowing the public to vote against the government via messaging appline. Youth-led protest group that emerged in July 2020 to challenge the government also planned gatherings in front of parliament on each day of the debate to pile pressure on Prayut and his ministers. Thailand issues recovery plan to boost international tourism in 2023. The National Tourism Authority of Thailand, TAT, issues a tourism revitalization plan for 2023 aiming to take the tailwind of recent tourism recovery to resume 80% of the pre-COVID level. Since the country relieved its COVID restrictions on the international travel in May, more and more tourists have been floating into its scenic spots with over 2 million foreign arrivals as of the end of June. To restore tourism, one of the country's pillar industries, the TAT revealed a plan targeting a total tourism revenue of 1.73 trillion baht, about 47 billion US dollar, 80% of that of 2019. The increased national vaccination coverage is pumping up the country's determination to absorb more tourists. It has been carrying out various measures, such as funding marketing campaigns by airlines to encourage the opening of more routes. South Korea's Foreign Minister meets Japan Prime Minister Kishida in Tokyo. South Korea's Foreign Minister Park Jin met with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Tokyo to offer condolences for the death of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. I have received the message of condolence from South Korea's Foreign Minister Park Jin on behalf of President Yoon regarding the death of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and I expressed my gratitude to him. He arrived in Tokyo for a two-day trip that aimed to overcome historical disputes and repair strained ties between the two countries. Relations have been fraught for years over the bitter legacy of Japan's occupation of Korea from 1910 to 1945. Disputes concern issues from wartime forced labor to export controls, but both nations have expressed interest in improving relations. President of China congratulates new president of Sri Lanka. Chinese President Xi Jinping sends a congratulatory message to Ranil Wickremesinghe on his election as a new president of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Wickremesinghe, 73, who previously served as Prime Minister six times, secured 134 votes in the 225-member House. She says, since the outbreak of COVID-19, China and Sri Lanka have stood together and helped each other, and their traditional friendship has been elevated. She believes that under the leadership of President Wickremesinghe, Sri Lanka will definitely overcome the temporary difficulties and advance the process of economic and social recovery. She affirms he highly values the development of China-Sri Lanka relations and China stands ready to provide support and assistance to the best of its abilities to President Wickremesinghe and the Sri Lankan people in their efforts. He also expresses the hope that both countries will carry forward their traditional friendship, consolidate political mutual trust and push forward the strategic cooperative partnership featuring sincere mutual assistance and everlasting friendship. 
And that's the news for today. We hope you enjoy all the news that was presented. Stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekend.